this is San Kush, a delicious melee of Caribbean people, food and craft. I'm just outside of Paramaribo in Suriname and I'm heading to an old maroon settlement called Santi Grand on the river Saramaca. Of course, I'm going to have to take a boat to get there, but first I have to catch a bus. Saramacan River to catch the boat. The thing about me is that I love water and I love boats, but I hate getting on them. So wish me luck. My friend George is going to help me. Hi, George. Good. Saramacan River runs south of Paramaribo between Suriname's tropical rainforests, said to be some of the most preserved rainforests in the world. We left Paramaribo in the early morning heading to Santi Grand, a village that's now home to over 2,000 maroons. Although my tour guide George no longer lives there, he brings visitors to the place of his birth. Maroons were enslaved peoples who fled the plantations during slavery and formed their own communities in often remote areas and different places in the Caribbean. For more than four centuries, Maroon communities have developed in plantation countries in the New World. Today, there are viable communities in Suriname, French Guiana, Jamaica, Colombia, and Belize. For the Maroons who settled in Santi Grand, the Saramacan River has played a very important role. Since the early 20th century, they've traveled in dugout canoes along the river to Paramaribo to sell their wood carvings and other craft and to buy the raw materials they need to continue their trade. This river has been essential to ensuring their survival and transporting their skills and unique products to locals and visitors from around the world. These days, saint is welcoming more and more visitors who are interested in experiencing a little bit of maroon culture. And yep, we all have to get in these shallow dugout canoes. This is a very small boat and we are very close to the water. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a bit of a nerve-wracking journey, but after only an hour and a half, we're here. We're here in Saint-Igrand. 